Good morning. It's Sunday Morning Live with John M. And here is our host, John M. Good morning. And who are you behind the camera? <laughs> <laughs> you forgot that part. I did forget that part. My name's Hillary. <laughs> Hi, Hillary. Good morning. Good morning to uh, the rest of you. Thank you for joining us. It is, once again, Sunday morning, and this is Sunday Morning Live with John M. I'm John M. And I have, uh, I'm, I'm very honored to have a very special guest with me this morning, Jules Shearer, whom I'll be introducing in just a moment. But there he is right there. Um, but but uh, first, a song. obstacle course Some ride in limousines Some ride a horse Some raise children, some get divorced We all have our crosses to bear We all have our burdens to share And life is not always fair Along the way we are tested and blessed What we do with our blessings Is one of our tests Blessed are the ones With the fewest regrets When we get to the finishing line If you're weary and worn at the time Our life is not always kind So much has been written about evil and good We all have our demons, that's understood It's not who did the best, but the best that they could Who will be rewarded in time When we get to the finishing line The rest will go around one more time You ask, why do innocent children die young While well, wicked ones prosper and thrive But the wealth of the wicked is here and it's gone We all know that everyone dies It all is the same in God's eyes Now I've probably left out a detail or two Just try to treat others As you'd have them treat you If we all help each other Then we all will get through And the questions that lay on our minds Will all be answered in time When we get to the finishing line That's finishing line, and that's a tree. <laughs> um, and now, uh, I don't want to waste any more time. I want to just get right into this. Um, I am very, I'm honestly honored to uh, to have with me this morning, Jules Shear. Welcome, Jules. Thanks for Hi. taking the time to do this on a, on a Sunday morning. I, I uh, appreciate it. Um, we are. Did I awake yet? Did I? Uh, am I awake? Uh, well, I. I we're here and we're okay. awake somehow. Good. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, so you you just have a you know a huge career in the music business and and you're some forty some years forty plus years of writing and recording and and uh, uh, working with you know some huge people and uh, and you have a show coming up this coming Wednesday. We'll get that. We'll mention that right off the top at the Grammy Museum right here in Los Angeles. Um, uh, what time do the doors open? Seven o'clock, and and the show starts at eight, 
And that's going to be like a kind of combined interview and performance thing, I understand. I believe. Yeah. I've, yeah. Never, I've never done it before, so I don't know. Oh, it's cool. It's a cool place. I, I, uh, Hillary and I are definitely going to be there. Good. We're looking forward to that. And um, so, uh, and are, are you, is this a stop like in the middle of a tour for you now? Or, uh, yeah, I just came out to the West Coast to do a few things. Uh-huh. This is among cool. them. Cool. Well, um, I got I got lots of questions for you, but why don't we why don't we start off and just let you play something, and uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Is that uh, from the new album? It is. Um, which is called One More Crooked Dance? That's correct. Yes. Um, what? Well, that's beautiful. And those thats those low notes that you were hitting, where, where that was just, it's like, it just kind of, your whole body just kind of resonates with them. That was wonderful. That's because I just um, woke up. Uh, <laughs> what, what tuning are you in on, on that song? Uh, uh, this, is, this is a G chord. And... At the bottom here, where it belongs, is an E. Right. So that makes it a minor if I use that. I see. Or that's an A minor if I use it, but if I don't use it, it's a, it's a straight C chord. So that's all the majors and the minors I got. That's what I got. <laughs> and if there's anything else I need, I have to tell somebody, oh, and that also has a note that's a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, play this note. Yeah, play this <laughs> note. Yeah, that's right. Well, one thing I noticed, that, and we talked about this before we went live, but you're, 
not only do you play guitar left-handed, but you but most left-handed guitar players play a a guitar that's restrung to be left-handed. But you play a right-handed guitar turned over, and, and yeah. you play that left-handed. Which that's is, because of my brother's it's an guitar. Impressive trick. <laughs> my brother's guitar originally, uh, which was a traditional right-handed. He's a traditional right-handed person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> probably the only way that I could tell you he was traditional is that way and um, so he had this guitar and he started playing it and uh, stopped just the car the guitar was just laying there and I just didn't even ask him I just took the guitar <laughs> and uh, just started and started playing it and figuring out how to do it I mean I was probably like uh, 10 or 11 years old or something wow. and I had to figure out how, how to make a, a chord out of the thing. So I flipped it over and I saw, oh, the low string's at the bottom. Well, that's the way it should be. The low string uh, should be at the bottom. And I've always the, thought that too, even though I play right hand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the high strings it should be at the top. So, um, uh, so I started uh, just figuring out chords and then figured, oh, if I make this a, a G chord, then I can play it. Do, go right up to the neck, and that that was cool. So I started doing that to write songs. Then a couple years later, I found out that oh yeah, if you if you make the bottom string up, <laughs> right? Whatever. People aren't interested in that, are they? Well, so a lot are, yeah. Especially oh. people who there's a lot of guitar players who watch this show. They, uh, I I met one guy once a long time ago who who's sort of ambidextrous, and he. He kind of plays the same way you do, but he can play right-handed. Mm. He, can, he can do it either way. Oh, and, show off! And, and he told he told me that a lot of the fingerings are actually easier played the way you do it. Really? Than, than the standard way? Yeah. Well, yeah. So. But also extremely limited. But mm. as far as uh, it is extremely limited as far as being a a great guitar player or something. But as far as coming up chords, it it is pretty pretty cool that way. Works and for me. lead playing, which I know you do a fair amount of that too, it's uh, yeah. But I goof around with lead <laughs> I don't consider myself to be really a lead player, but I do play sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, so let's see. We, we um, your your career basically started with uh, with the the Funky Kings way back when. And um, what was before that? Were you just like doing bars and like garage band stuff? Or uh, uh, I had a band here in LA called uh, Southpaw, and Southpaw uh, was was a, a really fun band, but and we had a good time, but then it just stopped. Uh huh. And so uh, that happens. <laughs> yeah, that does happen. So then the Funky Kings came along. And I was in a band with two other songwriters, Richard Steckel and Jack Temption. And those guys were both really good songwriters. Yeah. And I hadn't really met very many good songwriters. But I met those guys at a, I think in a club where people played, various people played songs. And when those guys played, I thought, well, these guys are really good. Why, why, where did these guys <laughs> come from? So I started talking to them. And we decided um, that we would get together and see what happened if we tried to put a band together. So we did. Cool. That was Funky Sings. So, yeah. And then we made a record for uh, one of the first records for Arista, which was Clive Davis's label. And um, yeah, he signed us to that label, and uh, and we made a couple records. So I I guess one thing I want to I want to ask you is where. Um, like I know you, I know you did a record with Todd Rundgren, at least one. You might have done a one. couple. One, okay, and um, and of course, you know your your kind of legendary work with Cyndi Lauper and 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 them. But I'm wondering where the um, and you, I don't, you may not even be able to pinpoint this, but um, where where was the fork in the road for you? The 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 moment where you realized that. You know, things are things are going in a really good direction now. Um, was it uh, was it the collaboration with Todd, or or was it before uh, that? Or? I don't think that's happened yet. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually knew you. That might be your answer. Oh really? <laughs> okay. But um, but I mean that you know, there's there's kind of as I see it, there's kind of, there's uh, okay, there's door number one in the music industry where where you you go through your whole life. 
you know, playing bars and, and small concerts for a couple hundred bucks or less. Um, and you just, you know, that's your lot in life and you kind of make the best of it. And I think that's where most musicians go. Then there's door number two, where you have, you have some moderate success. You make some pretty good money. You tour, you make records, people know who you are. Um, but, but you're not Elvis, you know, you're, you're not, you're not like hugely successful household name, but you have a successful career. And then there's that third door, which is Elvis and the Beatles, and you just, you know, so successful and so rich and famous, you can't stand it. Are um, there a lot of people in that door? No, there's very <laughs> few in that door. Um, and um, so I, uh, that's kind of where I'm going with this, you know, with this question is, is you, you seem to have ended up in door number two, um, from my perspective. And uh, you're, you're kind of, on the on the door number three side of door number two, oh, but, yeah. but still in door number two. I don't two. think so. Um, so, uh, I mean, you've had you know you you created and hosted a show on MTV, which everybody remembers, unplugged, you know, um, and but uh, and that you know of course the as I said the other the other stuff that everybody knows about. Um, so, okay, so I, I don't want to dwell too much on that, but. Um, I just uh, I was just wondering if you if there was a if there was a, a point in time when you realized that you know I'm 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 not going to be in door number one I'm going to be in door number two or better no okay <laughs> <laughs> okay fair yeah. enough um, so you're just you're you know you're plugging away like the rest of us um, well i you certainly have my admiration because I I so so far seem to be stuck in door number one. And, and I'm okay with that. I, uh, you know, I, it's, would I like to be in door number three? Of course, who wouldn't? Uh, but, you know, I take it as it comes and, and um, I make the best of it. And I, I guess that's what I hear you saying you do as well. You well, what, do you, do it. what is your choice, really? Yeah. Um, so when you, when you write songs, do you think, um, are you, you like, are you, are you focused on whatever your your message of the moment is, whatever you're trying to express that's deep in your heart, or are you thinking, you know, I'd really like to write a hit song, you know, uh, something commercial, something that the Bangles would do, um, or is it a combination of both, or is it more about the music and the guitar? Or, uh, what, what it's you, really about that first thing you said. Just coming just out of your heart. Just really that's, writing the song. Uh huh. That's all I'm thinking about is just writing the song, the song that I think is good. Mm -hmm. that's, that's basically it. And if somebody later on decides that they, uh, they're, they'd like to record that song, then they do it. And they do it their way. I'm not going to have any influence over that. They could make it a reggae version if they'd like. <laughs> and there's no way I can have any say so over that, so that's fine. And happens. you're okay with that? You're okay. Oh yeah, man. That's, I mean, <clears throat> the choice between that and them doing someone else's song. Right. I mean, that's the only choice you have. So, uh, yeah, it's fine. If they want to do it, change it any way they want. Yeah. Well, that's. I'm sure that's why you've, you know, you've had the successes that you have had. And, and I, when I was starting out, I used to be. In that, I used to be one of those guys that, well, you know, what do they want to do with my song? How do they want to do it? I, you know, I wrote it this way for a reason, and and I, I outgrew that pretty quick. I'm, yeah. Now I'm where you are. I do whatever you want with it. I don't care. <laughs> Make it a heavy metal song. <laughs> yeah, that's you fine. know. Um, well, you got another one for us? If you want, sure. Okay, since you mentioned Cindy, I'll do the Cindy song. Okay, the song that Cindy recorded.
same without saying We have no past, we won't reach back Keep with me forward all through the night And once we start, the meter ticks And it goes running all through the night Until it ends, there is no end All through the night The streak has cried Till the streak has sings back All through the night They have forgotten what by day they lack Ooh. And under those white street lamps There is a little chance They may sing We have no past We won't reach back The meter ticks and it goes running all through the night until it ends. There is no end. Sleep in your eyes is enough Let me be there, let me stay there a while We have no past, we won't reach back Keep with me forward all through the night then once we start, the meter ticks And it goes running all through the night Until it ends, there is no end All through the night Wow Beautiful. Thanks. That's great. The, um, does it ever happen when, when um, you write a song a certain way and you record it or demo it or whatever, and somebody picks it up um, and they record it their way? Do you ever find yourself, especially if it's if it has some success, do you ever find yourself kind of altering the way you do it to be more like the way they did it, or do you do you hold to the original? Oh, I guess I just play it the way I always play it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, if people want to do something different, they do something different. Right, right. But I don't. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Um, so, uh, what's what's next for you? <laughs> what, what's uh, I mean, you you know, you have this stop in California. You have the album, which I imagine you're promoting. Um, and then, are there is there are there any other projects on the horizon or tours or? Uh, now I'm gonna start writing songs for the next one. Okay. Yeah, I gotta write songs. That's what I like to do most of all, so I find an excuse to do it if I can. Uh -huh. Are Are you um, what what a lot of my writer friends would refer to as a as a disciplined writer? Do you Do you like every day at eleven o'clock I I write whether I have anything to say or not? Um, well, I do, or do you write. Just write yeah. When it comes to you. Oh, no, I do write when I have nothing to say. I'm afraid. <laughs> do you still use the tent? Do I still what? Use the tent. Oh, use the tent. Oh, the tent. Boy, you you did your research, didn't you? <laughs> Paul Zolo brought it up when we saw you at the Federal. And he's here, by the way, and says he loves you. <laughs> well, hi, Paul. <laughs> yeah, hi, Paul. Uh, 
Well, you know, I I, I don't have a tent anymore. Bummer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I used to have a tent that I went out to and rode in. And that was kind of fun, too. But now I have a writing room that's... Uh, it's really good. It's like that's in Woodstock, and that's like not part of the house, so I can go there, and it's good because I can uh, write without anybody hearing me, and that's good. People don't have to listen to me be bad <laughs> or be anything, whatever I am. Uh, you know, they might think I'm bad when it's all done, but that's another story. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, I do have a room that I go to. Do you have, like, some recording gear there in the writing room? That, uh, you know, I try to have as little recording gear as I can possibly have. Uh -huh. So that when I record, like this last record I did at a friend of mine's house, and um, he lives in Woodstock, too, so it was great. So I could just go over there, and that's cool. But, no, I don't have much recording gear. I just have a little thing to record on if I get something good, I don't want to forget it, so I'll right. put that in. Well, that's kind of what I meant, just something that you can lay it down. There is something, yeah, yeah but uh, there's not any sort of, you're, nothing I would ever play for anybody. Yeah, you don't have a knee board and <laughs> you don't oh, have no. all that. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. um, great. Well, um, one more song. Yeah, oh, no. Right. Don't make me do another one. <laughs> oh, no, please, please. No, it's too early in the day, I'm afraid. It is early. I, I apologize for that. We we got we kind of locked ourselves into this time slot. That's and, okay with know. me, but I, <laughs> you know, I don't want to do too much. No, I don't want to do Okay. Sorry. That's right. John oh, really? Sing, You're going to pass on John that? John will okay. sing one, one last song, and then we'll close out. Well, okay, then. What, can I make you beg me, too? Oh, no, I couldn't. Please, John, please. Oh, come on. I wish you would. Gee, oh, man. Oh, man. You're a great guest. <laughs> oh, because I do that stuff. Yeah. Well, I really, uh, I really am looking forward to the show. I want to plug that one more time, the, the show at uh, the Grammy Museum. Yes, and Dana oh. has posted a link to where people can get tickets, so just look on the, uh, on the comments section. Thank you, Dana. Dana's here with us. Um, so, uh, she yeah, also that's... posted where you can get his new record, which is an amazing record. I, I listen to it all the time. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I caught him off guard. Now he doesn't know what to play. Yeah. Well, I, I do, but I got. I have to readjust for it. Um. I'm actually going to do a song that, that Hillary suggested. My my friend John Zipper once told me, if Hillary tells you to do it, do it. So uh, this is this is a song that's on um, my current CD, and it's it's actually on the record. It's a duet with uh, Lisa Nemzo, and I've been playing it for a long time as a duet. So I've been. I got to kind of reluctant to do it solo, but I when I originally wrote it, I wrote it as a solo song and played it that way for a while. And uh, and Hillary said, "Well, play it that way." And as as usually, what never happens is, is Hillary says, "Do this," and I say, "Okay." What <laughs> what usually happens is she said, "You know, play it this way," and I go, "No, nah, I don't want to do that. I, it doesn't work that way anymore." And then a day or two later, I start thinking about it. Well, maybe. So <laughs> so um, so she won this one. So um, this is kind of a conversation between a couple of people. This is called "She Don't Live Here Anymore." Thank you, Jules, for doing oh, this with us. It's, it's really been uh, an honor for me. Good. Me too. He said, when was this picture taken? Well, that was a long time ago She don't live here anymore He said, where did she go? Oh, that really doesn't matter Come on, please, I want to know She don't live here anymore Please just let it go She don't live here anymore
anymore Long ago she disappeared She don't live here anymore She has not been seen in years No, I don't believe that's true She's alive inside of you Very deep and hard to see But she can't hide from me He said oh. She said you don't know what you say I don't know what you think you see But that picture in your hand It's just some girl that looks like me He said I'm looking in a window To a dark and lonely room And I know there's someone in there But that place is like a tomb She don't live here anymore Long ago she disappeared The girl you say you're looking for Will never be back here No, I don't believe that's true She's lying inside of you Very deep, hard to see can't hide from me, he said. Baby, what makes you so sure that I can't bring her back? She said that woman died four years ago of a broken heart attack. She don't here anymore and I know that you mean well but I've told you twice before she has died gone to hell she don't live here anymore long ago she disappeared please don't ask me anymore and then her eye produced a tear No, I don't believe that's true She's alive inside of you And broken hearted oh, She may be But she's crying to be free He said Oh, never mind, he said. Forget it. She wiped away her tear. It was the last thing he expected. How did you find me here? She said. So that's She Don't Live Here No Mo. And um, I am John M. And I'm here with Hillary and my special guest this week, Jules Shear. Um, uh, looking forward to seeing you Wednesday night at the Grammy Museum. Thank you for spending this time with us on a, on a Sunday morning. And Dana, thank you as well. Hillary, uh, and, and thanks, thanks especially to all of you. I've kind of ignored you this morning. Uh, it, I was un, not intending to be rude. But thank you, Paul, and all the rest of you, whoever else is here. Um, thank you for joining us. This was an important show for me, and, uh, and I'm, I'm glad you made it, those of you who did. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. And especially thank you for sharing and telling your friends about it. The show will remain on Facebook, uh, posted on Facebook uh, for the rest of this week, and we will be archiving it to YouTube as well within the next, uh, the next day or two. Just go to YouTube and look for Sunday Morning Live with John M., and you will see this show there along with all the other ones. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Hillary. Thanks, everybody, for coming, and have a great week.